there! My name is Chloe and I'm the Water Quality Lab Manager at Sierra Streams Institute. We're here today over near Pioneer Park on Little Deer Creek and we're going to talk about bugs. Why are bugs so important to our ecosystems? Do you have any ideas? Bugs are an extremely important source of food for a variety of animals that live in our ecosystems. They also are pollinators. Do you know what a pollinator is? Basically, a pollinator helps plants reproduce and create more plants by spreading pollen from one individual plant to another. And so, bugs are a very important source of pollination for all of the plants of the world. On top of those two things, bugs can be a very important indicator of stream health, and that's what we use them for over at Sierra Streams Institute. The bugs that live in the streams are called benthic, macro, and vertebrates. That's a pretty big word, so I'm going to show you a cool dance to help you remember what it means. So if you're in a chair, stand up. So first and foremost, benthic. What does that mean? That means below or down, so get low. Macro, unlike micro, like a microscope, which you have to zoom in to see very small things, macro means you can see it with your eyes, so it's really big. So jump up. And then invertebrate. What's an invertebrate? Do you know? An invertebrate means it does not have a backbone. Because we're vertebrates. We have backbones. But invertebrates don't. So they can do whatever they want. So let's try that again. Benthic, macro, invertebrate. Benthic macro invertebrates in the stream are extremely important to us as scientists because they help us tell how healthy a stream is or not based off the number of different bugs in the stream. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how we collect the bugs and then identify them using microscopes and other tools. There are lots of different types of benthic macroinvertebrates and each type has its own habitat needs and requirements in order to be able to survive and live in the creek. Here's what the habitat looks like where we're going to collect our bugs today. So, when there's a lot of different types of bugs in the creek, we know that the creek's probably pretty healthy because it's able to provide a wide variety of habitat to a bunch of different bugs. Streams that have poor habitat, however, tend to have very few bugs in them and very little diversity of the different types of bugs. Going out and collecting bugs is very important for us in helping us determine how healthy a stream ecosystem is. My coworker Dorothy over here is going to show you how to collect the bugs in the streams the way we do it at Sierra Streams Institute. To collect bugs in streams, we use this special net called a D net. You can see the frame of it is shaped like a D. Put it in the water facing upstream so that any bugs who are coming down the current get swept into the net. And then we like to dig around on the stream bottom looking for rocks. A lot of bugs you can find living on rocks like this one. So you give it a nice gentle scrub and put it back in the stream where you found it. Now let's see what we've got in the net. Here's what we collected in our D-net. It may not look like much at first, but believe it or not, this tray is full of benthic macroinvertebrates. If you pay attention, you might be able to see a few crawling around. We've picked out a few of the benthic macroinvertebrates we saw in our tray for you to get a closer look. As you can see, they are pretty easy to see with our own eyes. However, sometimes it can be helpful to have a magnifying glass to get a closer look if you have one handy. In our lab, we use microscopes to make it easier to see these bugs, something we'll show you in a second. For now, take a moment to observe these benthic macroinvertebrates moving around. What do you notice? Here we've made our bugs even bigger with the help of a microscope. There are a few features that are useful for identifying benthic macroinvertebrates, as well as most bugs. 
For one, you can look at how many legs a bug has. I noticed that this one has six legs, which makes it an insect. Another good feature to look for on these bugs is if they have any tails. This one, for instance, has three. That means it's in the mayfly order. Other useful features to look for include gills, body shape, and what its mouth parts look like. Using these clues, I can figure out that this bug is in the order Odonata, which means it will become a dragonfly or a damselfly. As you can see, our third bug liked to move around a lot, but we figured out that it was part of the order Megaloptera. So there you have it. Using clues from these bugs' bodies, we were able to figure out what order they belong to. You don't have to remember all those big scientific names for now. It's more important to learn how to tell apart different bugs based on their features. Many benthic macroinvertebrates only spend part of their life living in the water, and then they turn into insects that live on land. For example, this odonata will turn into a dragonfly. It's very similar to how a caterpillar grows and turns into a butterfly. Other BMIs, on the other hand, will spend their entire life cycle living in the creek, like leeches. To find out more about the different life cycles of all these different benthic macroinvertebrates and insects, check out the resources we've included in the description of this video. We spent a lot of time today hunting our own bugs, and now it's your turn. Go ahead and grab our bug bingo sheet that's provided in the video description and head outside. Find a nice spot and look around. I guarantee you're surrounded by bugs and you don't even know it. Just make sure you don't kill any bugs out there. They're not creepy crawlies. They're our friends.